Hey everybody, welcome to the 104th edition of drive Through Review. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Rivals for Catan. Uh, I actually got this uh, as a review copy through 2d6.org, uh, who got the copy from Game Salute. So thanks to them. And it's actually a game I was very surprised by. I didn't expect to, I didn't know what to expect uh, from this game. So it's actually a reprint of an old game called the Catan Card Game or something like that from the 90s, which I never played. And in this box, I've also got the uh, expansion to this. There's been an expansion for this called the Age of Darkness, which is uh, three new sort of uh, decks of cards that you can play with and add to the game. Uh, so let's take a look at this, and uh, I'll tell you why I like it, and go from there. I just wanted to show you, you can fit everything in the box from the expansion. You can see I've got the Age of Darkness rules and the regular rules. And then these do kind of slide down a little bit, but it's not too bad. You get all the cards in there. You could probably just do away with this insert, which I think I'm actually going to do, and just bag up all the things individually. Okay, so let me show you everything you get in the game. Now, if you leave aside these six stacks over here on the right, everything else here you get in the basic game. So you got some dice, you got a couple of tokens here, and then you've got settlements. You can see that there. So here's the cost of the settlements, and then when you build them, you put them up like this. You've also got roads, cities. And then you've got the stack here of basic cards, which are action cards, special buildings, all kinds of good stuff. These are mostly the cards you're going to be interacting with in the game. And then you've also got supplements to this basic set. So basically you're going to take all these cards, play with them, set up some stacks of the basic set, and then typically choose one of these eras here. So you've got the era of gold, you've got the era of progress, turmoil, these are all the basic game. And then with the uh, uh, expansion, you've got the area of Intrigue, Merchant Princes, and the area of Barbarians, which is really kind of a nasty deck. So players are also going to have these starting cards here. So you've got a blue player and a red player. Well, in here you can see you've got these sort of regions here, these land tiles. And most of these are going to start off with one of a certain type. So you've got ore here, and you start off with one ore. So this will be in front of you like that. And then if you roll a 6 or your opponent rolls a 6, you're going to get another ore. You're going to bump that up to 2. Roll another 6, it goes up to 3. They all cap out at 3. And then if you spend them to build cities or whatever, you're going to rotate them down. And then maybe you have nothing like that. So they've got all the different ones. They've got ore, wheat. They've got gold in here. Uh, you know, wheat and sheep and wood, everything like that. Players will also start with two settlements, just like in regular Catan. So you can see there's a settlement. And then everybody's going to have a little road. And I'll set this up how you're going to lay it out here in just a second. So based on the type of game that you want to play, uh, you're going to choose one of these theme decks. Now there actually is a variant that you can play to choose like all of these and mix them all in, have this giant massive game. Or you can even like do sort of a drafting thing where people draft different decks or decide different decks to use. Now along with these theme decks and also with the basic set down here, are these little event decks here and you can see they've got question marks on the back. Now what you're typically going to do is play with these and then choose a theme. So let's say I choose the Air of Gold. So I'll take these aside, I'll put them next to the basic cards and these will be the draw piles that we'll pull from. But then I'm also going to take the events that come with that era and shuffle them in with this event stack. So then anytime in the game when a player rolls a question mark, you're going to flip one of the events and something is going to happen, either good or bad. Uh, possibly for one or both players. Now the really cool part about that is there are cards in each of these decks and the action cards that are going to trigger and sort of either protect you from certain events or help you along when certain events happen. So there may be a building that keys off like a plague event. So if you have a city, all of your resources attached to that city are going to lose, you know, a resource. But if you've built a bathhouse attached to that city, then it's going to protect your city. Because the object of the games is to build up cities and more settlements and maybe other special buildings that give you bonus points and in a goal of trying to achieve 12 points. First player to get 12 points wins the game. So as you build up your, your tableau of your cities and everything and you start to learn what cards are in here and what cards are going to key off the events and what cards are going to key off each other within these different decks. And some of these decks are going to key off some of the basic cards and things like that. So you might have a, a building that you build in the basic set that in the era of progress, let's say you can upgrade that building if you built that building. So you're going to need to get to know all of these things. You really have a good grasp of what's in here. 
So let's take a quick run through of how to play the game. It's actually very simple. Um, and the complexity is going to come from, like I said, getting to know all the cards in here. Okay, here's a tableau set up for one player. Now the other player is going to have the mirror image of that across the board. And then in the center here, you're going to have regions, roads, settlements, and cities. And I'll talk about how you build those in just a second. So players will start with a hand of three cards. And then on your turn, you're basically just going to roll this dice and roll like that. So now, as you can see, I've rolled a four. So I'm going to increase my gold there because that's a four. And then I'm going to play an event card. Now on this event die here, there's actually two question marks which means I'm going to flip the top card of this deck. But otherwise, there's some other symbols on here. So if you get this one, you may have a Bountiful Harvest. Get all the, every player can choose a resource of their choice to increase. Uh, this one here means the Brigands will attack. If you have seven or more resources, you've got to lose all your sheep and all your gold, sort of like the robber. Uh, this one here is if whoever has the uh, trade advantage, which I'll talk about in a minute, will get an, a resource of their choice. And there's a couple other here. This one, whoever has the most uh, knowledge uh, symbols will get a resource of their choice. Otherwise, both get it. So you get resources every turn, but then you get this sort of variability that uh, it kind of adds a little bit more flavor. And you get more resources than, you know, like in regular Catan, you can go turns and turns without getting a resource. But you're always going to be getting stuff, always having things to do here. So you're going to roll the dice, get your resource, play the event or whatever. And then you can play as many cards as you want and can afford. So first you've got these action cards, and these are all just cards with an A. Basically you just play these, discard these to a discard pile, and do their effect. Otherwise you've got buildings here, and sometimes it'll actually be people. And you can see you've got the cost there in the upper left, this would be a brick, a wheat, and an ore. And then I can build that in one of my settlements here. So you can see this is an abbey, and it's got this little uh, library book here. So for every library book that you have, you can actually have uh, one more card in your hand. Normally you have a hand limit of three, but this means you can have a hand limit of four with each one of these. So I go to build this and I'll put this here like so. And so you can see each settlement has uh, two spots where a building or maybe a hero can go and heroes will give you some other uh, capabilities. Now if I upgrade that to a city, you can see a city costs uh, two wheat and three ore. Flip that over and I'll upgrade that to a city. Now I can build another card on top of this one and then another two here and then here. So you can build a total of four buildings or heroes in a city. And a city is also actually worth some victory points. So you can see the victory points there. You start off with two settlements, each worth a victory point, and cities will give you two. So you get two, you don't get three. You get whatever the top card is. And then obviously whoever gets 12 points will win the game. So building cities, extending your tableau is going to be a key way to getting points. Now you can see here I can build a road, so if I wanted to build a road say over this way, like so, then I could build another settlement here. So let's move over, I didn't give myself enough room, but so let's say I build a settlement, undo that, and as soon as you build a settlement, what you're going to do is plan a huge table, because <laughs> you'll, you'll definitely need room as this grows out, and then you're going to grab two of these region cards here. You grab them two off the top, and these are sort of duplicates of what's out here. Uh, these actually will start at zero, whereas most of these start at one to start the game. And then you put these on the corners like so. So now you've got a couple other resources. So when I roll a one here, I'm going to get uh, brick and I'm also going to get sheep like I had originally. So on your turn, you can play as many cards and build as many cards as you can pay for. Build any roads or settlements that you can pay for. And then you're going to go into sort of a uh, card drafting phase in a sense. So let's say I'd played all my cards except for one. What I'm going to do is draw back up to three. Now I can draw off any of these decks, either off the basic set or this era deck, whatever era I'm using. And you can see this era actually has two face-up cards that are always face-up, and you can always just choose and build these. And this is University, which gives you an extra point, plus an extra card that you can keep in your hand. So let's say I want to draw one off the basic set, and then I draw another one off the progress. So now I can take a look at that and say, you know what, I don't really want this, so I'm going to get rid of this one. That's a progress. I'll stick this under one of these two, whatever ones I want. Take it there, and then I'll draw another one. And that could be under my turn. Now I also have the capability, if I want, to spend two resources, and then instead of, I can get rid of the card, but then instead of just drawing one off the top, I can choose a stack. So let's say I get rid of that there, then I choose the stack here, and I can go dig through here, find a card I really want that fits my strategy, choose it, take it, and then just put this right back in there. You don't shuffle it, you just put it right back in. So this is really awesome right here. 
because you can actually, instead of just fishing for cards, which drives me crazy because every card game on earth does that, and there's enough of them, we don't need any more. As long as they're good, we can still make good ones. <laughs> anyway, this is cool. This is like a deck building aspect here, and you can go and dig through and sort of target your strategy. It's still gonna cost you resources, which you're gonna want to be keeping to build extra things, but you use that to get a key card that's really gonna help propel your strategy forward. But it's also gonna require, again, that you have a good knowledge of the makeup of these decks. Now, in addition to getting points from cities, and settlements and special buildings and all that good stuff. You also have these tokens here. And you see you've got the trade token there, this yellow one, and then this uh, strength token here, this red one. Uh, so the way that you get these is by building, uh, mostly by building personalities and trade chips. So in terms of the strength token, what you need is a guy like this guy here that has these axes on there. And so he's got four axes. And so the way that you grab this is kind of like having longest road. So if you have at least three axes and more axes than your opponent, you take this and it's worth one point. However, there'll also be events and other cards, depending on what deck you play with, that will trigger off if you have this or not. So it's good to get this anyway, if not just for the single point. Second, we've got the trade token. Now these are keyed off of these uh, trade ships here, and some buildings also have these. So you're going to play these trade ships, for example, in between here. And these may let you, you know, get double resources when you roll the numbers, or you can trade in resources. And one thing I didn't mention is you can always trade in three of the same resource for one other resource, kind of like in Catan. Whereas if you have one of these sometimes, you can trade in two for one, etc. And so these are going to give you, you know, added benefits just by themselves. But the first person to have three of these and also have the most uh, will get this. And this is also worth a point. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, I really like this game. Um, really, really like this game. Uh, th there's a lot going on in this game. Now, the first time I played it, I played like the basic game, which doesn't use any of those theme decks at all. And I was totally bored. I was like, ugh, what, what is the point of this? So I said, let me throw the theme decks in. And so I threw that in and right away it was like, boom. And, you know, just lots of little combos and things to figure out and have fun and, you know, give you a few plays at least with each, with each theme deck. Uh, and some of the later theme decks in the expansion are awesome. Like the, the Barbarian one is, is just really cool. So you get this building, let me just tell you about it. <laughs> you get this, it's like a building that uh, it, it gives you victory points and it's, it's variable based on the Barbarian attacks that will come. So if you're able to build up fortresses and use some of the heroes to uh, fend off the Barbarian attacks, you're gonna rotate that up. So your victory points are actually going to increase and there's some other cards in there that you kind of like, it's almost like you're aligning with the Barbarians, but you're kind of fighting. It's a thematic, they're kind of weird for some reason, but they work in the gameplay sense. And so it's really cool, it's really different than like if you play with the Era of Gold or Progress, where you're trying to just really get your, your economic sort of engine ramped up in a way. So you kind of some sort of different feels to the game, depending on which theme decks you add in. Now, I haven't played with, uh, you know, with all of them combined or anything like that, but I think that would be a lot of fun, uh, you know, once you get to know every single card that's in there, because there's like really good cards, it seems like, in each of the decks. That So maybe after a while, people are going to kind of, I can really feel that now already, it's like, okay, I know I'm going to dig and, and, and go and get these two, three cards when, when I use that action to go get the card. But it's still variable enough. It keeps the kind of tension there because, you know, you're rolling and getting resources and you might be saying to yourself, okay, I've got to control and, and build out and get enough settlements so I can put these buildings and these cool people in. So I've got to use resources for that. Well, when do I do that? Do I, or do I spend now and go get the cool cards that I need to do the little combos? So that really is going to keep it sort of variable and fun. So I've seen a little bit where, you know, you roll, you don't really get the right resources that you need, but you can always trade it in. But it's not like horrible. Like Catan, the original one, gets kind of horrible sometimes where you're kind of out of the game. And so this one, it's like, you're not really out of the game. It's just you have some turns you're like, you know, because you really need to get these two, three things. But it, that's fun. You know, that keeps it kind of frustrating in a good way. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot in here. And I would say definitely get the, if you want to get this, get the first one, play that a few times, and then get, get that expansion because there's some really cool, I don't know, I love that Barbarian deck. It's just really fun. You know, I really like the Barbarians coming, the Barbarian events, and 
you got to fight them out and the victory points go up and all that stuff. It's fun. Really fun game. And it's the kind of game actually that you can play uh, with maybe more, not casual gamers, but not really confrontational gamers. You can play some of the more basic theme decks, or maybe even just a basic game. And then if you find somebody that, you know, has the game or has played the game or really into the whole gamer thing, you can go grab that expansion stuff and get really into the meaty sort of complexities uh, there. So uh, anyway, so good recommendation. Quite surprised. Thanks for printing it. <laughs> okay, thanks.